right. Again, I thought, I, I do want to teach my Deshi this form. I do want my son to learn it, my youngest son. And uh, I thought you would benefit as somebody that maybe doesn't know the form or is relearning it based on how I teach it. I thought you'd benefit from watching how I teach my son. Okay. So we're not just gonna do the form like you see on all those other videos I shared and you just learn it because you're never gonna get it, get it that way, okay? Um, we have to go deeper. I would never just show the form to people in my own school, let alone my son and go, go, okay? So again, in the set, one weapon is bladed. And common to bladed weapons is this tactic, which colloquially, in, in my knife fighting training, we call it defang, defanging the snake. Okay? And what it is, is it's must, much less costly and thereby risky to stab something that is closer to you than closing to stab something, okay? So nine out of 10 times, it means cutting the arm of the weapon that is trying to hit you, as opposed to, for example, trying to cut the person's torso. So in an abstract way, here is my torso. Here is my adversary's torso. It is much riskier for me to close the distance towards this person and try to stab the head, the neck, the rib cage, etc. It is less risky for me to stab something that is in the middle of us two, okay? So for example, uh, in this case, the adversary has the Joe, and when they put that weapon as in uh, the previous move, this arm is closer to me as the bulkhead person. And it is much easier for me to try to cut that arm that is sticking somewhere out here in the middle of the fight than to come back and try to cut their head or their neck or something like that. Because the closer I get to here, more arsenal is available to my opponent, such as the rear end of the Joe can turn it on me, but also personal weapons, kicks, hands so they can grapple they can grab my weapon they can punch and kick me it is just much safer to not deal with the additional arsenal and just attack attack the thing that is sticking out so that is defanging the snake so in the moves where we're at the sword is attacking the lead arm of the joe okay what I do, however, there's two things that I'm going to try to combine because my goal is stay as way, away as much as possible from all those other weapons near their torso. So what I'm going to try to do is combine one to two things here or use one to two things. One, I'm going to try to move the X closer to me. This is the front arm of the Joe. And if necessary, I will move myself towards the X, but I will not move myself any further towards the spine as is necessary to cut the X, okay? So to understand where we're at, what I mean here is like, I'm gonna try to move what I'm trying to cut towards me so I don't have to get closer to here. And if necessary, I will move myself towards the X, but no more that would put me at risk by moving me closer. Okay, so if we're here, you just come over here, Tristan. And he has that weapon up in my face there. When I step back, I'm going to move him towards me that moved the X towards me, okay? And whatever I didn't get, right, in my movement, so whatever I didn't get, I'll move myself. But I won't move myself any closer 
that I start having the rear end of the Joe come up at me or a headbutt or a kick, okay? And I might have to combine these two. So as he comes up and I come here, whoa, there was a combination. But if I can hit that weapon, boom, because I bring him way in, then that's what I want to be. I don't want to get used to I'm always going to do Tsugiyashi, such that if you hit the person's back arm, you went way too far. You over penetrated. Okay? So in that portion of this move, I would like to focus in on this part. What brings the X close to me? Okay? That is an Aiki adhesion. Okay? And we know from Aiki that it is a communion of two forces. There's two forces minimum that have to become one. The one force is created by Uke's Joe going up towards the face. It has an upward energy. The other force is created by the sword person doing the Uchiyo Tosh. It has a downward energy, okay? And here, those downward energy and upward energy are neutralized, those two yang energies are neutralized and they, and the sword person moves the X closer to them so that they don't have to over penetrate so they don't near the torso area of the adversary, okay? When you do this, as we mentioned in Kihon Waza, so we'll go back to Kihon Waza, and many of you tried Kihon Waza with the internal aspects, and you're realizing, I'm freaking the hell out of my ukes, and they do this, or they do that, and they do that, right? Um, and as I mentioned many times before, one of the things that they do is they just try to free their center from the adhesion. In Jiwaza, I say, just go to the next adhesion point. In Kihonwaza, I say, no, that's bad ukemi, because uke is supposed to let their tanden be seized and spiral rotated by nage. Chiba Sensei sets are forms, but they are not Kihonwaza. That is very important. There is built in a counter. So there's an attack and a counter, and it is uh, not like at all like uh, Kihon Waza because there's no counter in Kihon Waza, okay? So you have to be able, you're going to be attacked, and then the uke has to counter. And here's the thing, that counter actually happens through the Aiki adhesion. That part is very difficult for the scaredy cat uke who's gonna be more afraid in weapons because the weapons hurt, as we already demonstrated, they hurt more than the hands hurt, especially when we're controlling for our environment for Kihon Waza, okay? So let me set up this problem more. He comes out. And we have his upward energy, and I have downward energy, and I neutralize the downward, and don't lose it, dude. I neutralize the upward energy with my downward energy, and when I neutralize and even them, the hand sticks to the weapon. But even on that one, my hand slipped at some point because you freaked out and you let the energy die. You get it? If you're going full speed, in, let's go back, okay, you're here. And when you go full speed, that weapon came up. Do you see that? Yeah. It didn't go like this. It didn't go. You see, do you understand? So when you go full speed, it's one energy, and you see that now I can move it with one energy. I don't have to calculate for your countering. Do you, do you get that? Did right. you feel that? Right. Okay, I don't know if you can see it, but I can feel it, and to me, I demonstrated it, all right? So just as he did, as much experience as he has with feeling this, even every time someone feels it, they freak the F out and they'll freak out more when weapons are involved, okay? 
So again, I'll try to make my point. He had upward energy. I have downward energy. Stay there, please. And I go ahead and adhere. And when I adhere, I bring the target that I want, the X, closer to me so that I don't have to over penetrate and I can cut the wrist off as I demonstrated, okay? The scaredy uke is going to just kill their part of the adhesion. So I'll be, they'll feel the pressure of the sword and they kind of drop it. You don't even have to let go. You can just let it go to there. You get it? So uh, if you feel it, you drop it. Okay, but if you pay attention, again, while that works at slow speed, didn't pull him in, didn't do anything, he feels quite alive. When we go fast, it goes into his shoulders. It goes into his shoulders, it'll pin his legs, and I will still hit the wrist. And I demonstrated this in one of the earlier videos, okay? And most importantly, he has no counter. And now we can't continue the set, okay? What people have done with Chiba Sensei's forms are the following, in my opinion. This person just touches this, like hits the stick, and then he can pull out and do something else. Meaning, I'm never really doing the move, and so he never really has to counter it, okay? And that's totally different. And when we get to move five, you're gonna see how radically different my form is and why. And, the, and why I do it that way is because I have problems with, I'm supposed to do an attack and they're supposed to counter it. I'm not supposed to just take turns. All right, so let's get to that point. And we're gonna stay slow so we can make this point. All right, so I go in one, he goes, boom, and I cut, okay? And we'll switch roles, because he doesn't know this part. Uh, you gotta go slow, you can't freak out, because I gotta be able to talk, do you understand? And so as I'm talking, you can't remain present without freaking out, okay? All right, so he goes, I go one, two, and he cuts my arm off. That's what he's gonna do. Never bring the sword over this way like that, okay? So you, you're not gonna cut way across your body like that. Keep the sword in the center of your body. So one, two, three, and he cuts. Don't bring the sword over there. Keep it in the center of your body. Just flick it. Uh, do you get it? Okay, so here we go. One, two, three, and he cuts. Got it? All right, here's what most people do. One, two, three, and they go this way. And then they ski here. All right, let's look at well, how would that work. I have problems with this because his weapon is in the way of my ski. If you take, for example, um, pretend this is, uh, do shomonichi. Shomonichi, just do it on my head. If I was gonna do Makia Tosh, you see that I move the weapon out of the way and there's the speed. Chiba Sensei's forms do that all the time. Displace the weapon from the center line then attack on the center line. But here on this movement, the way most people do it is they come over here, the sword is on the center line. Why would I get turned here? It makes no sense, okay? But if you pay attention, he did a move, he doesn't really attack my wrist, he over penetrates, and he doesn't really capture my center, and hence I can pull out. So we'll do it again. I go, he goes one, two, three, and I can just pull out this way. But if he had the adhesion, go a little slow, go a little slower, one, two, boom, he pulls me in, I wouldn't even be able to do that movement. You can see on video move number four how fast that little flick is, okay? You're not gonna be able to go in and out, and even if you could, the sword is waiting for you there on the ski, okay? So, we have to counter his weapon, and the way we counter it is not by disengaging from the IK adhesion, but using the IK adhesion. Okay, so it can't be a little scary who cares because you're going to want to disengage it. It may look like it works at slow speed, but it will not work at fast speed, okay? 
All right, so here we go. He goes one, two, three. Go slower, please. What I'm going to do is maintain that contact. I let him pull me, I maintain that contact. And when he comes back, I'm gonna bring this all the way around to here. One, two, boom, and three. And All I'm doing is when he hits it, you're going to have a circle on the ski and in. In. Every time you ski, there's a circle. I'm just using that circle and I'm using the adhesion to stay on him. Boom. I don't even want to film it from different angles. One, two, three, four. And just speed, you don't have to fall, you just move back. Boom, pop, boom, boom. See how close you can get so you can start working on your fear? Go. Boom, boom, try it again. You know, wait for the damn thing to come up before you reach for it, right? right. Okay. Boom, boom, pop, boom. You're too far away. Let's see if you can figure out that Joe word. Take advantage of the so speed to learn that you can take a blow from this, okay? Right. Got it? So I go one, two, three, figure it out. Nope. There you go. Withdraw the joke. There we go. A lot of tension in your body. This is what I mean now. Don't start getting used to getting hit. Right. At this speed, it's not going to hurt you. It doesn't take that much tension to do it, and you want to do it on the draw. Again, I'm not going to coach your Joe anymore. I'm coaching the bulkhead. where I want to be. You're okay. And you're okay. And uh, let's get back to the gym now. Slower. Slower. And relax. One, two, I'm drawing it as I'm making the circle. Don't go like this. It's as you're drawing. Slower, please. Why am I going? Why am I saying slower? I can't take it fast. You can't take it fast. You have too much tension in your body. So we're slowing down so you can brave up, so you can let go of the tension. Do you understand? So go slow and release your tension as you're doing it. There's tension in your shoulders already. Relax and settle into the ground. 
Here we go. Breathe in. Lift the tip. Try it again. Slower. Whoa. In you go. Pop. It's when I draw the weapon. Got it? Don't be out there painting. One, two, no. Boom, it's when you cut in, okay? Try it.